Well, I am Chris Chow, and this is Straight Chubb, an exclusive podcast brought to you by the Fantasy Headliner. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake and Kyle back at you today. Doing the next installment of our ADP show, Kyle. We're talking third round today, and a lot of people loving the series here on ADP. You messed it up. You try there. You go. I mean, you messed it up there for a second. You you really tried to look cool, and you totally bombed. I think I I went like I just did three different fingers. Yeah, that's okay. That's right. The people will understand. A little magic for the people is what I was. Swag Rich would have got it on the first try. Kyle's going to struggle just a little bit. But hey, (laughs) let's talk about let's talk about the third round today, Kyle. There's a lot of names here uh, that a lot of people have been talking about for weeks. You ready to break down the third round? Let's go for it. Perfect. Let's kick it off with number one in the third round. It's Mike Evans, and both of us are. You know, not like I say we're not on the Mike Web- Mike Evans bandwagon. There's just other guys that we like a little bit more. You know, there are more targets to you know be had by other members in that offense here this year. Mike Evans may be somewhat touchdown dependent, but does Gronk eat into those touchdowns? Uh, to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell him, and most importantly, only because there's other names in this round that I would rather have. Yeah, exactly. And you know, with Mike Evans, I'm surprised he's actually still going in the third round right now. To be honest with you. Just because there's been so much talk about Chris Godwin, about using the tight ends there, about Brady not being able to throw the deep ball anymore. not And and I don't necessarily agree with all those things. You know, with Mike Evans, I still think he's going to put up a a good amount of yards. Maybe we see a little bit of dip in those yards. He's still going to get a 1,000 now. And, yeah, you know, maybe the touchdowns come down just a little bit. But, you know, if they're inside the red zone, he's still going to be a big target for him. It's not like we're we're asking Brady to go to him like he went to Moss several years ago. So – I'm still fine with Mike Evans, but like you said, there's guys behind him that I would much rather have right now. That's right. I almost started singing again, Kyle. I just sang on the last show we did together, and you said he'd have a little bit of a dip, and I started thinking, I dip, you dip, we dip. Yeah, no, that's all I got, Kyle. I don't have the pipes that you got. Uh, Number two in the third round, and here comes the dancing. Uh, Kenny Galladay, somebody who we absolutely love. Mm. Here in 2020 is Kenny Galladay coming in the second pick of the third round. I love that. And I will buy me some Kenny Galladay. Our boy Chris Chouse just dropped an article on Patreon about Kenny Galladay. I couldn't stand up for 30 minutes after reading it. Uh, The guy is in line for a huge season. Love him here in 2020. Yeah. Anytime someone mentions the name Kenny Galladay, you know, I've got to either, you know, grab a towel and wrap it around me or sit down real quick or you know, hide it anyway. So with Kenny Galladay, yeah, we're going to have a huge <laughs> this year. Wow. We have lost all control and we're two picks into the show. I'm sorry. That's, That's okay. what happens when we record late at night. But Kenny Galladay, love Kenny Galladay. Top 10 wide receiver for me. I think I've got him at wide receiver six right now. Big touchdown upside, big play upside. He's the guy. Yeah, and if Stafford can stay healthy, Mm -hmm. watch out. Because, I mean, Kenny Galladay put up numbers with a quarterback last name of Blow. Uh, Third pick in the third round, Todd Gurley. Still sitting in the third round, which is absolutely crazy, but I love it because I love some Todd Gurley Mm -hmm. in the third round. If you had a trio uh, of three running backs and your flex play every week was Todd Gurley, and he can go out there and just be a shadow of what he was, that is an absolute goldmine in the third round. A lot of people say, hey, you know, I've seen him limping lately. I also saw him dancing on the field this week, so it can't be hurting that much. I'm still buying Todd Gurley in the third round. Hey, if you saw those dance moves, anybody that dances like that, okay, can run for a 1,000 yards in a season. So, But, you know, the thing about Todd Gurley, it's the one thing that I continue to say over and over and over. Even if the guy is dealing with some pain this year, I don't think Atlanta's really going to try to manage that pain too much. Last year, the Rams were worried about managing him because they invested in him long term. They wanted to make sure he stayed healthy, but then they ended up cutting him anyway. Atlanta's only in for the next year. Use him up. But he's going to want another contract. There's a great uh, class coming out of the draft next year. There's a lot of really good free agent running backs last year. Gurley's looking for another contract, and if he's not on the field for you know 14 to 16 games, he's probably not going to get one. So even if he doesn't feel healthy, he's sure as hell going to try and look it. Yep, absolutely, 100%. Fourth pick of the third round, and it didn't take long for us to disagree. Why? It's because it's Amari Cooper, and we haven't agreed hashtag on Amari, Amari. Cooper. Huh? No, uh, hashtag 
Amari Cooper. Uh, I just can't do it, Kyle. I just cannot buy Amari Cooper. Uh, and it has nothing to do with the lack of talent of Amari Cooper. I know he's talented. And he just tends to disappear, and he gets all of his points in bunches. I mean, there's like four games a year that he's going to help you win your fantasy matchup. And then there's going to be like nine other games throughout your fantasy year where he's not going to help you do a whole lot. Uh, you got Michael Gallup. You got CeeDee Lamb looking great. I can't do it. I'm not buying Amari. I'm selling him. Everybody on, the, on you know God's green earth knows you're going to buy him, though. <laughs> if, if you've been a part of Headliner Nation for a while now, you already know what the debate is. But hey, you know, we can link the two must have and must avoid videos below and people can go check them out and see all the in-depth analysis for themselves and they can make the determination. Are you buying Amari Cooper in the third round or are you going to pass on him? That's right. Now we move on from Amari Cooper and the next wide receiver up is going to be Adam Thielen. And a lot of people have lost that love in Thielen, Kyle. And I get it. He's a wide receiver, over 30 years old now, coming off of an injury riddled season. But there's no Stephon Diggs there. There's a rookie wide receiver. And we've already talked about rookies here being at a disadvantage here in 2020. Do I expect Adam Thielen to be a top 10 wide receiver this year? Probably not. But I do think that he sees a lot of targets in this offense. He already has that chemistry with Kirk Cousins. And with those added targets, I still think he's a very safe wide receiver. I'm going to go ahead and buy Adam Thielen in the third round if I need a wide receiver one. I just dropped a big name to avoid video the other day that did not or did include Adam Thielen and I'm not drafting him this year. And there's a lot of reasons why. And one of them is, is I just don't trust him to be the wide receiver one on that team. If you look at the splits with and without digs, yeah, the volume goes up for uh, Adam Thielen. You know, he gets more yards and he gets more receptions, but the touchdowns per game comes down. The yards per game comes down. The fantasy points per game comes down. And it just worries me if Justin Jefferson isn't going to be as good, maybe as some people really believe him to be, is he going to be good enough to take the pressure off to allow Thielen to really get that volume and that efficiency? That's part of my worry here is, is that he's just not going to be that good having to probably face a lot of cornerback ones this season. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's continue the disagreements, Kyle. At 3.6, we have Uncle Lenny, Leonard Fournette. Uh, of the Jacksonville Jaguars, I'm still buying Leonard Fournette. And the reason behind is I'm not sold that Chris Thompson is really going to be a thing in this offense. Uh, Leonard Fournette proved last year he could be involved in the passing game. He did great, and even in PPR leagues, he just didn't score touchdowns. Had Leonard Fournette gone out there and scored like three more touchdowns last year, this isn't really even a conversation. It's just because he couldn't find the end zone. I'm still buying Leonard Fournette because at this point of the draft, if I need a running back three, I don't hate it being Leonard Fournette. And I don't hate Leonard Fournette either. If you said that I, I really want to draft Leonard Fournette in the third round here, you know, I'm probably not going to argue with you that much. For me personally, if I'm sitting here in the third round, you know, I'd rather have probably one of the wide receivers behind him right now. You know, my hope would be Todd Gurley would be here instead of Leonard Fournette. You know, the thing about Fournette is, and I think Chris Chaus, you know, our, our boy Chris Chaus here at the Fantasy Headliners, said it best. I believe it was him anyway, who said that, you know, loves Leonard Fournette. And he agrees with the assumption that, Hey, you know, he could be, you know, he could be the starting running back gets the ball all season long. They absolutely run him into the ground or he could be gone by week seven. Cause they just can't put up with him anymore. And that's part of my concern is there's just been such a, a negative like history and relationship with Leonard Fournette and the Jaguars that what if, what if they say, Hey, we're done with it. You know, we're not going to deal with it anymore. If this team is losing a lot this year, they're going to have a really crappy defense. It's probably going to be safe to say they're not going to win a whole lot of games. Maybe he becomes a little bit too much of a hassle in the locker room, and they're just done with it at this point. So that's part of my concerns with it. Perfectly. Hopefully by that point, Ronald Jones will be fixated on the bench and Tampa can trade for him, and then all <laughs> of a sudden we'll be good to go. Uh, 3.7, Melvin Gordon. Another one of those guys who I'll say I'll buy them. Am I overly excited to buy Melvin Gordon, though? I'm really not. It's really my last-ditch effort, and that's why I have him as a buy, because if I don't have another running back by this point, I probably won't take another one here in the third round, obviously, but I just I, the volume will be there. Yeah, is it going to be great volume? How much is Philip Lindsay going to be involved? They have a lot of weapons in the passing game now. I don't love Melvin Gordon. However, as my running back three, if there's a lack of options at the running back position, I don't hate it as my weekly flex. I'd rather have Leonard Fournette than Melvin Gordon. I can say that for sure. 
and and it's really bait i mean basically you kind of argued with yourself there and, and you brought up a lot of the points i would have had anyway i mean i feel like if i were to draft melvin gordon in the third round i'm gonna have to go take a shower really hot water i'm gonna have to get out my manscaped cleansing gel and really you know cleanse the entire body all right i don't i don't know if i i feel like i feel pretty dirty after that pick well, I mean, it makes sense anyway, because you just told people to avoid him in a big names to avoid video anyway. So if you said to buy him, all of a sudden it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Then you're arguing with yourself. Uh, next guy up, 3.8, Allen Robinson. Another one of these wide receivers who just doesn't get enough credit, partially because of the team he plays on in Chicago with a quarterback situation that's still unknown. Who is going to suck less in 2020, Mitch Trubisky or Nick Foles? Uh, but one thing you can say He's going to see a lot of targets. He was among the league leaders in targets last year, and I really don't see that changing this year. There's going to be a lot of volume going the way of Allen Robinson. I'll buy him. I don't know if there's been a player that I've changed my mind more on this offseason <laughs> than Allen Robinson. Because begin, the begin the offseason, I was like, oh, man, I just, I'm not in love with that quarterback situation. And it was actually, you know, about a month ago on Straight Chubb when we were doing that podcast with Chris and Chris, and we really started to break down the wide receiver court for the uh, for the uh, Chicago Bears that I was like, oh, he's still going to get that volume. So I, I'm fine with it now, and I'll buy him here. And honestly, I'll take him as my wide receiver one. I'm good with it now. Yeah, absolutely. I totally am. Uh, 3.9, this is where we pissed some people off, Kyle. Don't worry. I live in Carolina. I'm sure I'll get the majority of the hate. Uh, 3.9 is DJ Moore, and we both have him as a sell here in the third round. And love the talent of DJ Moore. There's a lot of unknowns in this offense. I mean, what is Curtis Samuel going to be? What is Robbie Anderson going to be in this offense? What about Ian Thomas as a potential breakout tight end? We know Christian McCaffrey is going to get his. Can Teddy Bridgewater really supply enough volume to everybody to make them all somewhat fantasy relevant? I don't know. I think DJ Moore is going to be more big play dependent this year than he is going to be just based off of sheer volume. Yeah. And I think people get confused when I talk about why I'm not buying DJ more this year, because you know, my, my big thing was, is it possible that defenses try to limit the big plays from DJ more? And people are like, well, he doesn't stretch the field anyway. That's why they have Robbie Anderson. Now he doesn't go deep, like, but that's not what I mean. I mean, DJ Moore is, is a supreme athlete in, in dynasty leagues. DJ Moore is a top 10 wide receiver for me. Absolutely love DJ Moore as a player. But when I say limit the big plays, what if opposing defenses this year just say, we're, we're going to focus on more. I don't think they did that all that much last season. And I don't think, I think it was because a lot of people weren't expecting that type of a breakout. And I also think that people really under, you know, they knew that Kyle Allen wasn't going to be that great. And Kyle Allen still was able to get the ball to DJ Moore. So I think it was just kind of something that continuously caught people by surprise. They were so focused on Christian McCaffrey. This year, if they focus up on DJ Moore a little bit, maybe some of those yards after the catch per reception come down. Maybe some of those big plays come down just a little bit. He doesn't necessarily have to have 50, 60 yard plays. I'm not saying that. But some of those routes that he runs, if they try to cut him off in the middle a little bit more, so again, that's why I'm selling him here because I'd much rather have him in the fourth round as my wide receiver two than take him in the third round as my wide receiver one. Yep, agreed. 310, another disagreement for us, and it's Chris Carson of the Seattle Seahawks. I think Chris Carson is a beast at the running back position. It is just literally for me, the only thing is the hip injury because every time he touches the ball, he's going to get hit on that hip or land on that hip, and that's what worries me and the fact that they drafted a DJ Dallas, that they brought in a Carlos Hyde, is that they have questions too because there's a lot of depth there in Seattle. If he's 100% healthy, love Chris Carson. The problem is in the year of the Rona, we haven't seen anything from Chris Carson. So I don't know how healthy he really is. Is he out there going to take full contact before the season? It's just things that I really need to pay attention to now. If in the next week or so we start to see film of Chris Carson out there fully involved in all team activities and the full pads. Okay, I'm going to start changing my mind a little bit, but I haven't seen that yet, so I can't buy it until I see it. It's kind of the opposite for me. I'm buying him until I see he's not healthy. So, <laughs> perfect. We have both sides of the spectrum covered, Kyle. <laughs> he's just he's so he was so good last year on a per touch basis. And I always go back to that. I mean, I loved Rashad Penny coming out. I still think Rashad Penny is a better running back than what Chris Carson is. Chris Carson fumbled the ball, seemed like darn near every single play. 
and <laughs> Carroll still doesn't take him out of the game. Mm-mm. So if he can't Carol fumble away the job to former first round pick Rashad Penny, I don't know how he's going to fumble away the job or even, you know, give up the job unless he is still hurt and can't play to DJ Dallas. And yes, Carlos Hyde is there, but uh, you know, it's Carlos Hyde. You know, Carlos Hyde was only good last year because of how much volume he got. So if Chris Carson is healthy in there, you just drafted a running back one in the third round. So, I mean, that's, that's a win on value. And like we say, we don't hate players. We hate values. And for this one, I don't mind this value. I think it could be a great return on investment. I am convinced at this point that Chris Carson has pictures of Pete Carroll and his side piece on the road somewhere. And Pete's just, he's just, he's committed to Chris Carson because those photos can't come out. That meeting um, that Pete Carroll had with DK Metcalf where they both took their shirts off. Yeah, that's just, who knows what happened behind the scenes there. Exactly. Awkward. The Carson meeting was just, it wasn't photoed by anyone other than Carson and it went, exactly. <laughs> it was worse. Exactly. Uh, the 311. The person who everybody hates, I feel like, and it's Odell Beckham Jr. of the Cleveland Browns. Why? I mean, I get it. If Odell Beckham had a first-round ADP, I probably would have a sell next to his name. But the fact that you can get Odell Beckham in the third round after taking two stud running backs and you still land Odell Beckham, the potential ceiling there, I don't want to say it's league-winning, but it could be, and if we saw his floor and it's still a 1,000 yards and this team is better than it was last year overall, I'll buy Odell Beckham every single draft I can in the third round. Yep. Especially the end of the third round. I mean, it's almost fourth round at this point. Yes, and that's the thing too. People are drafting him saying, oh, only a 1,000 yards, and it's because, you know, if this was a rece- – if Odell Beckham Jr. was a decent receiver, consistent, right around a 1,000 yards every season – a decent amount of touchdowns, people would be drafting me here and not blinking an eye. But it's because you've seen him be a first-round pick before and put up that kind of production. You're like, oh, he doesn't have it anymore. Oh, I don't trust Baker Mayfield or whatever it may be. I'm going to say this right now. Eli Manning, you can have the debate of whether or not he's a future Hall of Famer. That's not what I'm here to discuss. Baker Mayfield is as talented as Eli Manning is, 100%. And if Odell Beckham Jr. could do that with less superior weapons around him and Eli Manning at quarterback – he can do it again with more superior weapons around him and Baker Mayfield. Yeah. And I think what it is is a lot of people are stuck on the the diva Odell Beckham mm-hmm. from his New York Giant days. The one thing that I saw last year over anything else was some maturity from Odell Beckham. He could have total went full diva last year with what happened in Cleveland, and he didn't. He, didn't. he held it together. He acted like a professional. It's the first time we've ever really seen that in that type of situation from Odell Beckham. And that type of maturity just leads me to believe that he's ready to take his game to the next level and he's going to be healthy. So, yeah, buy an Odell Beckham. He's putting uh, nuts for far less in New York than, he, than what he went through in Cleveland. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 312, last pick of the third round. It's going to be Mark Andrews, tight end of Baltimore. I, I mentioned this in our second round video. I don't mind taking a tight end in the third round if it's Kelsey or Kittle. More than likely, they're probably not going to fall that late. If I don't hit one of those two guys, though, more than likely, I'm going to pass on tight end until the you know, the later rounds of the draft. I do think Mark Andrews has another great year. Is it any better than last year? There's a few question marks there for me, so I'm going to sell Mark Andrews here at the end of the third. I'm going to buy Mark Andrews, and honestly, there's not enough time in this video for me to break down why it is because I went super in-depth on my must-have tight ends video about Mark Andrews. I mean, the dude is an absolute stud. And what a lot of people don't realize is he played in almost half as many snaps as Travis Kelsey did last year, and he was still a top option at tight end. So just imagine now him and Hayden Hurst played in the same amount of snaps last year. You have to imagine that Mark Andrews is going to get, even if he gets 200 more snaps, you know, that's, that's great. That's just that many more opportunities he has. He, one hundred percent can finish as the tight end three, possibly tight end two. It's kind of spicy, Kyle. Mm. I love spice. It's a little, a little spice here. Yeah. Uh, later Sprinkle some of that little... spice right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to woo all of you with my bicep. You, you didn't woo anybody. All right. So that was the third round. Now we've now gone through three straight rounds here of ADP. We're going to go all the way through the sixth round. That's what we're going for here. But like always, we want to stay interactive. So leave those comments down below. Let us know what you think about the players in this video. 
If you enjoyed this content, which how could you not, make sure you hit the subscribe button because our channel is full, full of all this type of information. If you're looking for more in-depth details, we got you covered. Head over to the channel now that the show's almost over and check those out. Do us a favor, hit that like button. We greatly appreciate it. It really does help us here on YouTube. And for myself and Kyle, hopefully you guys have a great rest of your week, a great weekend, and we'll talk to you later.